Hello, this is Dan with Orbital Guitars, and welcome to this T-Type guitar build. Uh, different from my usual form of commentary over videos, I'm just winging this one because, uh, well, this video's been sitting in the backlog for a long time, waiting for me to finally get around to it, and wasn't really looking forward to it. You'll find out why later. Anyway, I'm beginning by working on the neck. Uh, this is a three-piece Wenge neck. And it's left over from the uh, headless guitar I did the year before, which is titled Bob 1.5. As you saw, I started by routing and chiseling the truss rod channel, now cutting away some of the excess material. Moving on to working on the headstock shape. And of course with this being a uh, fender style headstock, there's no brake angle, so I just have to remove some material from the front. And then drill for truss rod access. So here using my miter saw and the fret slotting saw blade to cut all the fret slots. And of course cutting away the excess material from the sides of the fretboard. I really like this piece of kingwood that I used just because of that one bit of sapwood going right up the middle. I thought that looked really nice. And just some more shaping of the neck taper and the headstock. So at this point I'm ready to glue on the fretboard. Uh, both the neck and the fretboard are a little bit oversized so that I can uh, remove some more material once they're glued together and have the edges be perfectly flush. Just put in some locating pins, set on the fretboard, and clamp everything down. And then you're just using a uh, bit of a just a straight edge template to uh, route down the edges of the neck to be the exact taper that I want. And then going to the spindle sander to refine the shape of the headstock. And then also using the spindle sander to make the curve at the bottom of the headstock transitioning into the fretboard. And of course I need to make a little channel for the nut, so I'm just using my Dremel with a precision router base and a little router bit in it to grind away the material in between the two slots that I cut while I was using the jig. Here for the inlay, I'm just using a leftover scrap of bog oak. I thought the uh, really dark brown to black wood was going to look nice on the more reddish purple of the king wood. I 
I do tend to prefer using bits of wood as in as fretboard inlays over something like Mother of Pearl, even though I think Mother of Pearl looks really nice. Uh, just the fact that you can use wood glue to put in other bits of wood, and uh, or just the fact that it's a lot easier to work with bits of wood, and, and the dust is still toxic, but not as toxic as what you would get from Mother of Pearl. I was just routing away the material that I need to to get the inlay pieces in and gluing them in place and sanding it flush. At this point I decided that just the 12th thread inlay didn't look quite right on what would be essentially a Telecaster, which normally has, you know, the usual dot inlays, so I decided to add those as well. I just find it a little amusing watching this part back. You can see sort of the uh, shadow sort of being cast behind the uh, inlay when I spray on the, the accelerator for the super glue. And of course sanding the rest of them flush. And then it's time to sand in the radius. We've on this one I put in a 12 inch radius. Well, I sand this up through, I uh, start at 80 grit, then uh, 120 and 220, uh, all with the all with the radius block, just to get the fretboard nice and smooth. And then putting in the white side knots. And then just shaping the end of the fretboard because having it cut off just straight in, just in a straight line doesn't seem... Um, I'm not sure what the word I'm looking for is. I, I like the look of it better this way. It looks like a... When you cut it off straight, it just looks like, well, this is the best idea I had, so I went with it, I guess. And here, I'm putting in some uh, gold fret wire. This is because I was going to match all of the rest of the hardware for this guitar, which is going to be gold. It's also a bit uh, harder than regular nickel silver, so that's also a benefit, while not being as annoying or difficult to work with as stainless steel. And checking the neck for straightness. And checking the frets for if they're level. And of course they almost never are, so go on and level the frets. And here I've got both a uh, Z file from Sumac and a traditional uh, fret crowning file. So I like to do the initial passes with the Z file because that gets most of the work done and any little touch-ups I can do with a regular crowning file if I need to. And then going in with some 220 grit sandpaper to just smooth out any little scratches that were left behind by the files. Then I'll follow that up with some 320 grit paper and then I'll move on to some uh, well, polishing rubbers and then some polishing compound after that. And once I'm done with all of that, it'll be very smooth. If 
Pile that up with steel wool, and then there's the buffing compound. And once you're done with the buffing compound, you have to go in and clean it all off with a bit of water. And then you can see they really start to shine. So here there are some little gaps at the end of each fret slot where I had removed the excess bit of tang, so I'm going in with some dust and super glue to fill those in. And this bit of super glue will also help to keep the fret ends in place. And then of course drilling for the tuners. And something I've started doing a lot more recently is rounding over the edges of the fretboard for improvements to player comfort. And now it's time to carve the neck. And you're just using the saw rasp and the faceting method to do the, do the whole carve. I don't have any particular neck profile that I try to carve to. I mostly just go with the facets and then adjust it by feel until I'm happy with it after that. And of course once I'm closer to being done I switch from the saw rasp to a much finer rasp and I'll also use that, the uh, half round side of that, to carve the volute or just the transition to the headstock in this case and also the transition to the heel. And now it's time to move on to the body. So this was a big slab of extremely figured redwood. I had originally bought this slab of redwood for another build, which I'll get that video out eventually. Um, but it was thicker than I needed it to be, so what I ended up doing was uh, just maxing out the capacity on my bandsaw and uh, resawing off the top roughly quarter inch so that I could use it for the top on this build. And then here I've got some pieces of alder that I'll be using for the body. I'll say for anyone who's just looking to get into guitar building, alder is a very nice wood to work with. Maybe not this piece particularly, uh, because this piece had a lot of knots in it. Uh, but generally speaking, the wood is pretty easy to work, and it gets nice results. It's also fairly lightweight. Now once I've glued the pieces together and got them sanded smooth, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the shape of the body. and then cut out the shape of the top. And some of the tricky things with this particular piece of redwood is that it developed a lot of cracks uh, and it also wanted to warp. So I had to uh, do a lot to try and counteract that. And here I'm just putting in a couple of locating pins on the body and then gluing on the top. And you can kind of see there, I, I knew good places to put those locating pins because I already had the layout for where a pickup was going to be and also the other one went into where a neck pocket is going to be. So there's not going to be any sign of those once the guitar is done. And then once the glue is dry, I take it over to my router table and finalize the shape. Now here there's a really uh, rough knot right in this corner. So uh, I ended up not doing that part on the router table. I did it with my spindle sander instead because I was really concerned that the router was going to tear huge chunks out of it. And then here I'm drilling for the pickup and control cavities. 
and also for the neck pocket. And of course finishing the cavities and the neck pocket with a hand hold router. And putting a bit of a comfort carve on the back side of the body. Here you can see I did most of the work with an angle grinder, then following it up with a half round rasp and then a much finer rasp to get the shape nice and then sand it smooth. And you don't want to forget to drill a path for the wires. Or at least don't forget to do it uh, before the neck has been glued in. I did that once. It's not a good time. So here was a little bit awkward that the, uh, the hole for the jack had to go in right next to that knot. So it was fairly tough drilling. Of course, I also like to recess my jack plates a little bit because uh, if it's just me that I don't like to see them uh, sticking out from the side of the guitar. And here, just giving a gentle round over all the way around. There goes a quarter inch round over bit. Alright, so here's where the first issue with the build occurred. Now, these four holes. Uh, we're just supposed to be for the screws that attach the bridge to the body. But for whatever reason, I thought I was drilling for the strings to go through. So a couple of those holes in the body went all the way through. And I'll address that later. But here I was thinking the redwood looked a little bit paler than I liked, so I got some uh, stain, and it's not a very dark stain, it's actually fairly pale, but it really made that figuring pop out. Alright, so there you can see I tried to just plug the two holes in the back that were there, but I thought the uh, repair stood out a little bit too much and just looked too much like a repair. So what I decided to do was put in a big decorative patch on the back of the guitar that covers this whole area. And again, I used a piece of bog oak for that. I'm actually fairly happy with how this turned out, and uh, if anybody asks, you can just say it's a tone patch. You know, since the strings go through that, it makes them sound better. At this point, I was ready to glue in the neck. So for this build, I wasn't really trying to be like a really traditional Telecaster, you know, hence the comfort carve on the back, which uh, Tellys don't normally have, and also this uh, set neck with a fully carved transition from the body. And personally, I really like doing this sort of carve to go from the neck to the body, because I feel like it makes the guitar a lot more comfortable to play. There are lots of carving, uh, an angle grinder with rasps and then a sander to make it nice and smooth. And 
in here I was trying to put a uh, decorative plate on the front of the headstock and you can see I tried a few different ways to try and get it not to crack and split. Uh, mostly I just tried using water to uh, soften it up and that mostly worked. Had to get a little bit creative with the clamping but it mostly worked. And then here I had found out uh, the second issue with the build that the headstock wasn't quite thick enough so I also put a decorative plate on the back of it. And then here's where the third issue with the build occurred. Uh, so I was building this uh, in 2022 and for whatever reason the stores that I have available to me locally were still claiming that due to supply shortages from the pandemic uh, there was a shortage of lacquer. So I tried to use some stuff that I could find and it did not work well. So I ended up totally stripping off that finish and switching to a polyurethane. And what happened after I did that was as you can see along the bottom of the body there, there was a weird reaction with the wood that only showed up after the new finish was applied. So it looks like a real mess there. I'm not sure why this occurred or why it didn't show up on the original finish, but as soon as I put on the poly that that showed up. And really unfortunately, because I was building this late in the year, I didn't have enough time to put on a different finish or to strip this finish off again and try to do it again because it was just getting too cold. Um, you know, because I work out of a garage and there's no heat in that garage, there's no insulation. When the weather gets cold, I have to stop working for the year. And I was about at that point when I noticed these issues with the finish on this guitar. And yes, I could have stopped the build there, put it on hold until the following summer, and then just stripped off the finish and finished it again. But there is also something to be said for moving on from a build. You know, there had already been multiple issues with this build, and... You know, you get to a certain point where you completely lose the motivation to work on it. And, you know, yes, it could turn out better if you kept going, but at the same time, if your heart's not in it anymore and you keep going, you're just going to keep making more mistakes. So I ended up leaving it the way it was. And that's pretty much how the finish is going to be unless, I don't know, I find the motivation later or if somebody truly wants this guitar and wants to do it themselves, then I guess they're welcome to do that. But at the same time, uh, the front and the back, the neck, all of that, I'm really happy with. It's mostly just that weird looking finish that, I don't know, just kind of kills this guitar for me. But the finish on the front, I don't know if it really comes through on camera, has like you can see the texture of the wood through it. You can see some of the little cracks in the redwood, which earlier I had tried to fill with super glue and all kinds of things to try and get this nice, like super smooth, glossy finish, but that really just wasn't working out with this wood. It didn't, it didn't want to do that. Um, but I ended up really liking how it looked actually, because it's got this sort of old violin kind of look to it, which I think is really nice. You can see they're putting in a set of uh, bare knuckle pickups. These are the brown sugar set. So really nice pickups. Of course, all gold hardware. Yeah, I guess going back to talking about the finish and things. I guess the real takeaway is here is that you need to know when to step away from something that isn't going the way you want it to. So I'm not really sure how to phrase what I want to say, but um, it's also somewhat the curse of being a creator that Whenever I look at this guitar, I can only ever see its flaws because I know every single one of them and where to look for them. And that's true of every guitar I make. I mean, there have been a couple that came out really, really well and my 
the flaws that I can see in them are so minor that I know nobody else would notice them or care because I, I barely even notice them, but it, it's very true that everything you make, there's going to be something that goes wrong with it, and at least for me, I can never not see the flaws. Yeah, that, that's also the takeaway here, is if, if you're doing something like this, mistakes are going to happen. And sometimes, like the patch on the back of the guitar, you can get creative and do something with it that looks intentional and actually kind of looks better than if the issue hadn't occurred. But then there are other ones that can happen, like what happened with the finish on this one, that, well, they just eat at you. Anyway, in my ramblings, a whole lot more work has happened in the video, and the uh, the knot is just about done. I filed the slots into it, and I'm sanding it to uh, round over the corners, make it nice and comfortable so that if the player's hand bumps into it, they don't hit a sharp edge, and then polishing it up with some scotch bright pads. And then here I felt like putting in a string tree. It probably wasn't entirely necessary, but I thought it was just going to benefit the guitar overall if it was there, so I decided to do it anyway. And this is a nice one with rollers. So then just some finishing touches, getting the slots in the nut down to the appropriate depth. I always do this after the guitar has been strung up so that I can actually feel what the the action of the strings are and how they're sitting in the nut. If necessary, I can take the strings back off and file down the top of the nut if the uh, the slots are a little deeper than they should be. And I mean deeper from the top, not too deep to where the strings are buzzing. And then here just putting in the strap locks. And then after this we'll go on to a playing demo.
Thank you.